Metal Mike here. In this episode, I have a chat with John Labar, the brother of late Cinderella guitarist Jeff Labar. This episode is a tribute to Jeff. We talk his early days as a guitarist, his rise to fame, and some career highlights while he was in Cinderella. Jeff meant a lot to me growing up as a Cinderella fan. I'm sure many of you feel the same way. So I hope you enjoy finding out more about him from somebody who knew him very well. Check it out. Well, John, welcome to the 80s Glam Metal Cast. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. Hey, I just wanted to say that I was sorry to hear about your brother, Jeff. Uh, I never met him, but I was a fan for a long time. He seemed like he was an amazing guy. Yeah, he was a... Thank you for that, and uh, yeah, he was a real good guy. What's the age difference between uh, you two guys? I am five and a half years older than Jeff. Oh, okay. Now, uh, are you a musician as well? Well, I used to I used to play guitar. I don't really play anymore. I still have some guitars, but I don't really play anymore. Uh, yeah, I started playing guitar when I was about 14, and which means I was about nine, I guess. And... Uh, he kind of, he kind of, I, I never understood why, but he kind of looked up to me and kind of tried to follow in my footsteps. So, you know, he would, uh, he would take my guitar out and, uh, when I wasn't home and kind of dance around in front of the mirror, <laughs> you know, with, with an album on or some music on and, uh, pretend he was playing. And I came home one time and I caught him and he thought I was going to be mad at him, but, uh, well, you know, I thought, well, you know, if he starts playing guitar at this age, he's got a chance to be pretty good. So I sat down with him, I showed him some basic chords. I had a lot of songbooks, and I showed him how to follow along in the songbooks. You know, uh, there were songs that he knew already anyway, so I told him, you know, you, you know how the song goes, here's the chords, there's the little diagrams above the travel cleft. I showed him how to look at those, and, you know, I, re- I really didn't, I really didn't do that much. He he did most of the work. I mean, he had a he had a really good ear, and he picked it up really quick. What was so some of the it, you know, What was some of the early songs that uh, that you guys were jamming on? He he was really into uh, Led Zeppelin. Was really the first band that he really got into. I mean, I'm a big Beatles fan, so he listened to that. Mm-hmm. But the first band that he kind of called his own was Led Zeppelin. And then after that, it was like Alice Cooper and Black Sabbath and bands like that. Nice. And I like those bands too, but they were they were the bands that he, he really got into. When you're watching him go here and he's practicing a lot and he, he's developing, I mean, what did you think? Did you think that, uh, did you see something in him? Like maybe he had a shot? What were you seeing as, uh, as he was progressing as a guitar player? Well, it was kind of funny because, like I said, I kind of had my life and he had his life, so... Um, I really didn't know how good he was getting. It was like, uh, there were a few times we played together a little bit, and I kind of feel like he didn't want to show me up. Really, after he had been playing for like a couple of months, he was already better than me. And, uh, but I didn't, I didn't know it. Uh, if we played together a little bit, he, he didn't, he didn't try to do anything that would show me up or anything. So I really didn't know for a while how, how good he had gotten. At what point did you realize he was like, okay, this guy's got the goods? I mean, did you go see him play in some of his early bands? Or Yeah, he had put together a band of friends. Uh, they, they, in the beginning, they called themselves Cashmere after the Led Zeppelin song. But then um, they found out there was another band by that name, so they changed their name to Voyager. And uh, they we, we went to Upper Darby High School, and... Uh, they, every year they would have a battle of the bands in the gym. And so one year Voyager was playing. And I don't even remember if I even, I used to go to the battle of bands every year to watch the bands play. And I'm not even, I don't even remember if I knew he was playing that night or not. But I got there and uh, they were playing. And I was blown away. I had no idea how good he had got. <laughs> and the uh, lead singer in the band at one point introduced him as Jeff Labar, the king of guitar. Nice. And he came out he came out and he played the uh, William Tell Overture. Mm-hmm. And for some older people might know that as the theme to the uh, the Lone Ranger. And it's a, it's a really fast piece of music and he played it even faster than it should be played and I was I was blown away. I, I had no idea he had gotten that good. 
you, you know, I think for fans of, of Cinderella, I think we were always amazed at what he could do on stage when he played. I mean, he's swinging guitars. Uh, he's running all over the place. He's still nailing the riffs and the solo. So, I mean, just amazing performer, too. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, we're, we're very much the opposite in that way. Uh, I'm very much an introvert, and he's a very much an extrovert. So when I first saw him playing with Cinderella, I couldn't believe it, the way he was running around and jumping around and kicking his legs up in the air and all that. I mean, I, I would never do something like that. If I was playing, I'd probably be just standing still with my head down. <laughs> And, you know, another thing about Jeff, which everybody can attest to, is that he had the look, man. He had the big hair. Uh, and even I always thought it was cool that he wore high tops because I thought that was pretty original. A lot of people were wearing, you know, boots and, uh, you know, heeled boots and things like that. But he had um, he had those high tops. And he seemed pretty comfortable with that glam look. Was Is that kind of how – was he a glammy guy during that era? Did, is that the way he dressed all the time? No, well, no. No, not not all the time. I mean, he wore the Reeboks all the time, but mm-hmm. uh, the rest of it came kind of with the territory. That's the way bands, that was the look they had at the time. I know, like, uh, it, it, it always kind of cracked me up because Tom Kiefer would wear the cowboy boots and he was tall to begin with, and Jeff would wear the sneakers, so Tom was looked like he was two feet taller than Jeff when they stood together. <laughs> When the auditions, you know, there becomes an opening in Cinderella and there's auditions, you know, Jeff beat out a lot of people and, you know, all of a sudden he's on, you know, he's he's making an album that's on a major label, mm-hmm. TV videos. He had to be stoked. He had to be on cloud nine. Yeah, it was, it was funny because uh, he joined Cinderella in 85 and my first son was born in 85. So at the time... Uh, we have two uh, younger siblings, and they needed some room in their house. So I kind of talked Jeff into move. Well, I asked Jeff to move into my house. He, he took. Uh, we had a little room down the basement. It was kind of an apartment, and uh, Jeff moved in there. But he was doing his own thing, and I, I really had no idea what was going on. Uh, he told me he was auditioning for a band called Cinderella, and uh, I had seen they had done a local commercial. Yeah, it was hot dog place called Pat's Chili Dogs. That was before Jeff was the band. Uh-huh. But I had seen that commercial, and he told me he was, he was auditioning for that band, and I was kind of like, oh, yeah, like, you know. So, uh, yeah, then he told me he got the he got the part, and they had a record label, and, I, and, even, and even still, I knew, like, to get into the music business was a million to one shot. Right. So my attitude all along was kind of like, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. And, uh, yeah, he just kept rolling along and, uh, you know, just kind of snowballed. It was, it was pretty amazing. So, yeah, so it had to be at that point, once you see him on MTV, that had to be pretty surreal. Oh, yeah. I mean, even when they, they made their first video, he, he gave me a, a VH, VHS copy of it. And, uh, you know, I, I saw it and I thought I was really impressed because it was the Shake Me video mm-hmm. and I thought, you know, it was really professional looking. I wasn't expecting anything like that. And then when they started to get into heavy rotation on MTV, it was just amazing. And it was funny because my, my parents, you know, of course, they were older. And my mother had MTV on all day long, just waiting for their video to come on. And she'd get really excited when, uh, when Shake Me came on MTV. Yeah, and Shake Me was big, but I think... It really blew up with Nobody's Fool. I think that's when the album just, you know, exploded. Yeah. Yeah, that was the second video. And uh, uh, by that time, they were they were on tour with David Lee Roth. And that was his first solo tour. So, mm-hmm. you know, there was a lot of anticipation for that tour. And it was a pretty big deal for them to get the opening slot on that, uh, on that, uh, that tour. So... Yeah, they that's uh, they really started to blow up there. So he was living at your house for a while. Once he gets out on the road and this album blows up, I mean, do you see much of him after that? No, I didn't. Except, well, I did go see him when they would play wherever. You know, uh, we're in Philadelphia, so we're outside of Philadelphia, and they would play the Spectrum. I went to see him there, but it, it was also kind of a hassle because. Anytime they would play in Philadelphia, they would get a million requests for for tickets and whatever. And being an opening act, they they could you know they had a limited number of uh, tickets they could give out. So 
I kind of started going to see them in other cities that were sometimes close by and sometimes not. Like at the time, a friend of mine was living in Oakland and they were playing two shows in San Francisco at the Cow Palace. So I took that opportunity to take a couple days off work and I flew out to San Francisco and, and stayed with my friend and uh, we went to see both shows. And that was pretty cool. Yeah. But it was even cooler than that was after after one of the shows, uh, my friend and I went with Cinderella and we went to, uh, there was a, a comedy club called Wolfgang's in uh, San Francisco and Sam Kinison was, was playing there. So we all got, went over there and saw Sam Kinison. Then we went backstage and hung out with him a little bit. But for, for me also, uh, some of the older people might know Your McAlkinen and Jack Cassidy. They were both in uh, Jefferson Airplane and then Hot Tuna. Those two guys were backstage at the same time, which was a thrill for me. I don't think anybody else knew who they were. <laughs> that was pretty cool. You know, it's funny you talk about Cinderella as a live act, and, you know, they're an amazing live act. A lot of the bands in the 80s were kind of, like, overproduced and sounded really good in the studio, and then once you got to see them live and you were disappointed, Cinderella was not that way at all. I mean, they could pull it off exactly like the album. Uh, That was the second concert I ever went to. I saw them on the Long Cold Winter Tour, and it was uh, a killer bill. It was the Bullet Boys, Winger, and Cinderella, all hot on MTV at that moment. And Cinderella, in my opinion, and blew everybody away on that bill. They were just so good, man. It was just awesome band live. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm biased, so I, I thought they were great. But, you know, I, I'm not sure my opinion really counts that much because, like I said, I, I am biased. So when you get to the second album, Long Cold Winter, um, the band's yeah. starting to get bluesier. Uh, was Jeff on board with all that? I mean, definitely Zeppelin has some blues elements to it. Um, w- did he like that direction the band was heading in? Yeah, that, that was really Tom's thing, but uh, Jeff was definitely on board with it. Uh, he kind of, he, uh, Jeff would kind of, if he were on his own, he'd probably go more in a, in a, in a more of a metal mm-hmm. direction, but he was definitely into the blues sound too. One thing I noticed, and I guess I didn't notice it as much when I was a kid, but when I look at it now, I mean, Tom does a lot of guitar solos as well. You know what I mean? Where And it looks like Jeff, you get to Long Cold Winter, and maybe he's doing maybe just a few of the solos. Did he care? Mm-hmm. Uh, like what, what, what was his mindset? Did he care that he didn't do all the solos, or was he just there to just make the band sound good? How did he approach all that? Well, Jeff really looked up to Tom. He really admired him a lot. And whatever Tom wanted to do, he was, he was just fine with that. And he, he was fine with playing second fiddle. And he's, you know, he's been in a lot of other bands too. And I always told him that he should really, he should be the focus. He should be the one taking the lead. But he, he was always, he was always uh, more than happy to share the stage with another guitar player. He did that in some of his uh, side projects. Uh, he did, Years later, he was in a band called Naked Beggars with uh, with Eric Birdingham, mm-hmm. and there was a second guitar player, and, you know, they would share the solos. He, he was always happy to share the stage with another guitar player. He had no problem with that. What did you think of all the guys in Cinderella? Because you obviously, like you said, you got to hang out backstage with them. I mean, did you get along with them? Were they cool guys? Or what was mm-hmm. the, the vibe? Yeah, they, yeah they, they, were, they, uh, they were definitely cool. Uh, they all had different personalities, and uh, Fred was probably the most outgoing and funny kind of guy. He, he's the one that you'd probably want to hang out with. Tom was more cerebral and quiet, and you know, he, he it always seemed like he, he was thinking about the, you know, what was coming up. You know, what, what's the next step for the band? Eric Eric was also quiet. He just kind of did his thing, and he didn't really have a whole lot to say. And that's so, you know, they were all cool. That's cool. It's funny with with Eric, especially because I think he's another one on stage. He's so uh, he's, he's moving around, he's going crazy, and he seems more of like a wild guy. But then, yeah, you're saying he's a little, he's kind of reserved. That's that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he's he's not he's not a wild man at all. Or at least he wasn't. I don't know. Uh, it, back in the day with Cinderella, he, in the early days, if you notice, he had no tattoos. Yeah, and then along he 
he and his first wife separated, and he, he got together with his second wife, Inga, and she, she apparently she was a fan of tattoos, so then Eric started getting a lot of tattoos, and I think she, she kind of, Inga kind of pulled him out of his shell a little bit, but, you know, he was basically a, a quiet kind of guy. One, probably the peak, the live peak uh, of this band, or it was, probably, it was probably a peak for a lot of bands that were involved. The Moscow Peace Festival. I mean, you're, obviously, you know, you're in Moscow, you're playing to this huge crowd, and I just feel like Cinderella just owned it, you know what I mean? And Jeff especially, because I, I was watching this, uh, I don't know, a few months back, and, and Jeff is just owning this giant stage, running back and forth. And it's like, man, A, where did these guys get this energy? But B, you know, what a what an amazing stage and an amazing vibe that was going on there. I mean, did he ever talk about, like, how awesome that was to be part of that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he thought it was great. You know, again, when I said I'm an introvert, he's an extrovert. He, the, the more people who were in the audience, the more it kind of, I guess, pushed up the adrenaline, adrenaline level, and uh, he wanted to give him a good show. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the way he was. As popularity of, like, the hard rock and the, the 80s metal scene, you know, started to de- decline, um, what, what was Jeff going through at that point? Was he kind of bummed out with the direction that music was going in? Uh, it's, let me see, it's, it's kind of hard to remember. I know they, they took it, in my opinion, and I told Jeff this, they, it seemed like to me they took too much time off between Long Cold Winter and Heartbreak Station, mm-hmm. but that wasn't his call. You know, mm-hmm. Of course, it, that's, you know, Tom was the leader of the band, that was sure. his call. But, uh, yeah, he, they just kind of took some time off, and, well, they, the Long Cold t- Winter tour was a, it was a very long tour. So after that, they needed uh, they needed some rest and relaxation time, and uh, Tom needed time to write some more songs. So they yeah you know, they kind of took a little time off, and unfortunately, the the grunge thing came on and kind of pushed them out of the way a little bit. Yeah, I I thought that Heartbreak Station album was an excellent album, but it didn't do nearly as well. It still did well, but it didn't do, didn't do nearly as well as the first two albums. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and then by the time you got to still climbing, it was kind of like that whole scene was over. And it was weird because for that album, there really was no promotion or anything. It just kind of came out, and that was it. You know, there's no videos or anything like that. MTV had pretty much given up on you know bands like Cinderella. So as fa- for fans, it was frustrating. Yeah, I mean, it's the it was MTV. It was also the record industry, and yeah, you're right. The the record label didn't promote that album at all, which is a shame. I thought it was a good album. But again, I'm biased. So, yeah. <laughs> right. One thing that Jeff did, uh, you know, in more recent years was he did a solo CD, uh, One More for the Road. And I think what you're talking yeah. about, you know, if he were to do something, like you said, it, it would always be more metal. And I think that's what mm. you're hearing with this. And I always think it's cool to hear what somebody's musical vision is on their own. Because like you said, you know, Cinderella is Tom Kiefer's musical vision, you know. And all these guys are kind of working together to, to make that vision come true. It was kind of cool yeah. to hear what Jeff was doing. So he, he was writing his own songs. Uh, he's singing his own songs. Uh, I think mm-hmm. those. I think it's, that album is really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and again, I'm biased. So <laughs> I thought it was cool though that he he changed it up. It wasn't just hard rock. You know, there were the two uh, acoustic uh, mm-hmm. uh, instrumental tracks on there that were really cool. And if you li- listen to something like. Uh, Nightmare on My Street. Yeah. I mean, that definitely shows the Alice Cooper uh, influence on him. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. See, I wouldn't have known that he was an Alice Cooper fan without you telling me that. So that that's pretty cool. I'm a big, big Alice Cooper fan. When they did their uh, side project with, with Naked Beggars, they used to use Alice Cooper's "Hello Hooray" mm. as kind of the opening music before they came on stage. Oh, nice. That That's a great one. So eventually, Jeff kind of steps away from music, and he becomes a chef. Did he find, like, a, yeah. a new passion in, in cooking? And then, well, how, how did he get to that path? Well, Jeff, uh, from all the years of jumping around on stage, he uh, developed some physical problems. He had a hip replacement. He had his left hip replaced, and, and he really couldn't jump around like he used to, and and also playing with the, the smaller bands and the smaller venues, he had to lug his own equipment around, and it was taking a physical toll on him, and he just felt like he couldn't do it anymore. And he was just kind of 
uh, trying to figure out what he wanted to do next. And our mother is, is Japanese, and she's got, uh, she's a great cook, and she's got all these different uh, things that she makes that we love. And Jeff decided that uh, he wanted to learn some of her recipes and how to, you know, how to prepare them. So he would, he would call her on the phone from Nashville. You know, we were up here outside of Philadelphia. He's in Nashville. And he would, you know, he would, she would walk him through it while he was on the phone, how to make these certain things. And he just found that he really loved cooking and decided to go to culinary school and uh, make that his second career. Was there ever talk of maybe Cinderella doing something again? Did, did Jeff ever mention that, or was that kind of off the table? Because Tom has kind of been out there like a solo act, and I, I don't know if that's kind of just where he wanted to continue. What, what did Jeff ever say about it? Uh, well, there was, uh, yeah, it was obviously uh, Tom did his solo thing, and he was happy doing that. And Jeff, yeah, he was he was happy cooking, and, um, he always said that if if Tom called him to put Cinderella back together, he would drop everything and do it in a second. But you know that never happened. So right, right. you know that's kind of just the way it went. What do you miss the most about him? Uh, just just seeing him, talking to him, just hanging out. I mean, since he moved to Nashville, I really didn't see that much of him. But mm-hmm. we we would text. You know, whenever something came up, I you know meet you know. We usually talk about music, so, you know, something, if there was a new band out or a new album out, and I, you know, I'd send them a text, hey, did you hear this album, you know, or, or maybe even sometimes I would uh, ask him about something on one of the albums he did, like, hey, what, what did you do here, or, you know, things like that, but, uh-huh. you know, and even now, it's like, I'll be listening to something, and I'll hear something, that, and I'll think, ah, oh, you know, I should text Jeff and ask him about that, but of course I can't do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's hard to, to get used to. I, I've been through that myself and it takes a while to, to say to yourself, I can't, I can't do that, but it, but it's in your mind. You want to do that. T- totally, totally know where you're coming from on that one, John. What is something that you mm-hmm. want people to remember about him? Well, Jeff, Jeff was, you know, he was more than just a guitar player on stage. He was a great guy. He was, he was down to earth. He was funny. He, uh, you know, I've read a lot of things about him on Facebook, fans saying that they met him and he, he was really nice to them and made them feel comfortable. And, you know, that's that's the kind of guy he was. He was just, he was just a regular guy. Yeah, he, he's just a regular guy who just happened to play music for, for a living. So, you know, I mean, you know, I've met some other rock stars and they seem to have a big head or, or, or maybe there was a persona they were trying to portray and he was he wasn't like that he was just he was just a regular guy well this was awesome john i really appreciate you sharing uh this info about jeff you know jeff and cinderella was something i was really into uh, i realized i think when jeff passed like a piece of my childhood you know was gone and, and it was sad but i think that uh jeff will always live on through the music through all those performances that he's done and uh man mm-hmm. like i said really appreciate the inside information about jeff yeah i feel lucky that i have uh you know we have the recordings the the cds with the different bands and and uh you know i can play them anytime and hear his playing and uh you know, his, his son Sebastian is now carrying on the family uh, legacy. I guess he's in a band called Pantric, and he's they've been on tour. I don't know; it seems like forever. And you know, they're a smaller act, so they're playing bars. But uh-huh. uh, Sebastian is a really good guitar player in his own right, and uh, you know, he's carrying on the family name. That's awesome. All right, my friend. Will you have a good night? All right. Thanks. You yeah. too. Take care now. Bye bye.